Okay, uh, I'm going to show you how I tie the reed. But before I do that, I want to talk to you a little bit about tubes. And uh, tubes are, it's, you know, it's fairly critical what you use and how you use it. And I think that the tube and the shape need to interact really well. So not everyone's going to use the same equipment, of course. If you use a wider shape, you might need a bigger tube. But you know, I tend to run into problems when things get big. And conversely is also true. Um, <clears throat> Here's some tubes that I inherited. Here's one. Um, you know, I haven't been able to make these work. I don't know, especially this one. It's just very heavy. I'm not sure I under the, understand the premise of it. But I stick with the traditional cork tubes. And also, I would urge you, if you can afford it, to use silver tubes. In fact, use gold if you can afford it, because um, they sound better. It's, the metal just sounds better, and that's just the fact of the, the way the metal resonates. Um, be careful that the tube isn't too big, okay? Like, for example, that to me, I, I could... I could use it, but I wouldn't, because it just, it's just too big at the top. Um, this creates problems. Also, conversely is true, be careful that it's not too small. This is a Glotan tube. This actually fits pretty well. But if it doesn't make it through, okay, don't use it. Now, there are acceptable limits. Um... That, however, to me is just too is just too big. Uh, you might be able to make something with it, but I would struggle with that. Okay. What I've been using are the, the Loray AK tubes. I think it's a nice size tube, and it fits very really well. And, and look how it just comes off the end of the mandrel passes through the end there. It's, it's very good size tube, and it's not too small on the bottom. Sometimes when tubes are small on the bottom, the upper register is flat. So you got to watch out for that. So I'll show you how I tie. Now I use a C-clamp and I put a coin so I don't ruin my table. And, uh, if you don't want to ruin your table, you might want to do that also. This thread that I'm using is thread that... Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure where I got it, but I don't like it. <laughs> um, it's actually feels more like silk thread. I have used silk thread, but now I'll pass um, beeswax on the thread to keep it from slipping around. Especially nylon thread gets very slick. You want to don't want to put too much. Get the excess off because it'll sometimes the thread will split because of it, believe it or not. Um, so, yeah, nylon or silk, uh, it depends, you know. I've known people, uh, I had a student that used to tie their reeds with dental floss. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I recommend that, but this nylon seems to work and it's made in the USA, which is even better. Now I have my Loray tube here, AK, and a Loray mandrel, and a freshly gouged piece of cane. Now, when I seat, put the cane on the tube. This is incredibly awkward. Let's see, hold it with two fingers, right, and try to line it up in a way so that it. I can see where the end of the tube is, and it's about the same amount on each side, okay, exposed, and then I'll wrap once. And then, again, I'm not pulling too hard, but just so I can see what's going on, okay. You can see it's closing, you can see one side is It's more open than the other. Now, um, I fear that I will not have enough, and you have to make a 
judgment here on this, okay? I'm afraid that I won't make with the wraps close the cane by the time I get to the end of the tube. You do not, I repeat, you do not want to go past the tube, okay? If you can help it. So what that means is I'm going to have to loosen up just a tad here in my right hand. I'll see if I can get this a little closer so you can see what I mean. Now I'll loosen this up a little bit, just lightly, and then try to move the cane down with my finger. Okay, so I moved it just a hair. Alright, now I'll do another wrap and see where this will take me. I think the problem is I'm just getting too far down the cane, so I'll just roll it up the thread a bit. But that's not going to work because I'm going to run out of room. You have to give yourself some room over here. Now you don't want this too tight, but it needs to be firm, okay? Now in saying that, I do use the spool, as you can see. I can use without the spool, but I just find that I, I get a better, tighter wrap when I use the spool. And I'll take some thread off of the old spool, the new spool, and put it on an old spool. See? So I'm not dealing with as much thread. Alright. I'm going to have to finagle this here. It's got to go down. Yeah. I'm afraid this piece of cane isn't going to work out. It's just too heavy. Now the other thing is, you want to check and look down to see that it lines up with the mandrel as best as possible. So that that cane should be splitting the mandrel right, right in half. Or as about as symmetrical as possible. Yeah. And I can see, or I look carefully to see where the end of the tube is. And I have to judge how many more wraps based on what I've done, yeah, to get to the end of the tube. And I think we're going to be fine. So I will do... And I use... When I move the cane around to even it up, okay, I'll use my fingernail. See this fingernail? I use that to move the cane around. So I'll push one blade or push the other blade to to help get it even and symmetrical. Now don't loosen this too much. Just a little bit. Just let go of it just a little bit and then you'll be able to push with your nail yeah, to move the cane around. Yeah. All right. I think I got too much on, so I'll take some off. Yeah, that's better. Maybe not for that side. Sometimes if you fight the cane like this, is going to fight me all the way, this one here. I'll try tying, see how many I got. And I don't know that we're going to make it. Well, it's not pretty. And I think what I'm going to do is go back and see if I can get it to line up really well. I'll push the thread. See how I push the thread a little bit with my thumb? Okay. It's how you manipulate. You use your, your thumbnail to move things around. And you just, basically, you're just, you're not really holding this. You're just kind of balancing it so it doesn't spin out of control. Okay. Or spin away from you. Now, this seems to look a little better. This piece is a fighter, though. i got to tell you, it's, um... You look at that it lines up, it's even. Hmm? Then you check again that it's symmetrical, yeah, relatively. It's all relative. And I think two wraps, I'm going to do it. So, we'll do one pull. So far, so good. Two. We check to make sure that I like to see, I don't know if you can see this or not. This isn't focusing too well, I don't think. Hang on a second. Let me see if I can do this. 
Let me see. 